And you cannot know him unless you follow him. And you won't follow him unless you are in love with him to such an extent that you'll leave everything so as to be with him. The knowledge and the love and the following of Jesus are three inseparable realities which mutually lead to each other. This is the heart of our vocation as disciples. We are not ultimately followers of a set of rules and regulations, not adherents of a philosophy of life, not even people who believe in a certain list of things. We are followers of a person, Jesus, whom we want to know and want to love and want to serve. Not simply as an impressive figure from the past, but as someone who is still alive today and who is inviting us into a relationship of love and life with him. And through that relationship, into a relationship of love and life with each other. St John Bosco, like all the great saints of our Catholic tradition, knew this. And he brought that knowledge alive by giving his life to the Lord. Ready to do whatever it was that God would ask of him. And we're here tonight honouring his relics because of this. He was a disciple of Jesus and he lived his discipleship with courage, with initiative, with enthusiasm and with total fidelity. In the letter to which I referred that Pope John Paul wrote to the church, he speaks about what he calls the lived theology of the saints. And he does so, I think, because he's convinced that these great men and women, and perhaps in a particular way, those like St. John Bosco, who've given birth to great religious movements in the church, the Pope's convinced that these people have a unique gift given to them by God to share with the church. It's really a special insight into what it means to be a follower of Jesus. And it seems to me that the Lord gives this gift to the church as he does over and over again because he knows at any particular time in our story we have an urgent need of such a gift. If the church and the world had an urgent need for the gift which Don Bosco is when he was alive, uh, 150 or 200 years ago, I'm convinced that the church still has an urgent need for this gift. What this gift will do, what Don Bosco offers us, is to shed light on what it means to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. We're lucky in Australia, we've been able to reflect on this in a very personal and very immediate way because of the canonisation of St Mary MacKillop last year. She speaks to us, it seems to me, of a particularly in a particularly powerful way of the fact that holiness is not something that only belongs overseas or only belongs in the distant past, but is something that belongs to us in this country today, in this city. It's not that far from here to Brunswick, where she was born. Other great saints in our tradition similarly speak to us in these powerful ways. St Francis of Assisi, for example, among the many things that he has taught us, reminds us that really, if you're going to be a disciple of Jesus, you have to be ready to give everything. St Dominic, the founder of the Dominican Friars, reminds us that if you're not prepared to stand up and proclaim your faith to others, you might wonder how real that faith is within yourself. And if we look at our saints, and each one of us will have our own favourite saints, 
If you look at your favourite saints, each one of them in one way or another will shed light on what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. We're here tonight because in some way or another, for some of us very directly, for others less directly, but we're here tonight because in one way or another, we have been touched by Don Bosco. And I think that means that the Lord is saying to us, through Don Bosco, I want to share with you a precious insight into what it means to be a follower of Jesus. And what is that precious insight? I'm convinced that if all the saints, each in their own way, reflect something of the love of Jesus, St. John Bosco, through his life and through his example, reveals something to us of the inner heart of Jesus. Not just that Jesus loved. Not just the extent to which Jesus loved. But actually the way in which Jesus loved. This is the gift of Don Bosco to us. Those of you who know the Salesian story would be familiar with the letter from Rome that Don Bosco wrote to his Salesians. For those who don't know, I won't tell the whole story, but it's simply the story of Don Bosco finding himself in Rome, doing some business for the Pope, and in a dream, being visited by two past pupils from the school in Turin who in the dream say to him, Don Bosco, would you like to go back and see how things are going at the oratory, which was the name he had given to the school. And Don Bosco said, yes, I will. So the two past pupils take him back and they walk through the playground and although everything seems to be going fairly well, there's no longer that spirit of energy and enthusiasm that there used to be. The spark was missing. And Don Bosco noticed this. And when he asked what had gone wrong, he was told by the two past pupils that the Salesians were no longer as committed as they used to be. And Don Bosco was shocked. How can that be, he said? They spend their whole lives, from morning till night, working for the young people. They're pouring their lives out for these young people. How could they do any more? And then in the dream, the two past pupils said to Don Bosco, all of that is true, but the best thing is missing. When Don Bosco said, what is this best thing? The two past pupils said, it's not enough that the boys are loved. They have to know that they are loved. It's not enough that the boys are loved. They have to know that they are loved. This, I think, was Don Bosco's own secret. This, I think, as a Salesian, is the heart of Don Bosco's apostolic spirituality. And where did he learn it? He learned it from Jesus. Jesus didn't simply love. He loved in a way that was real and obvious and immediate so that whoever was loved by Don Bosco knew it and had no doubt about it. But he learnt it from Jesus. You may remember the story in John's Gospel of the woman caught in adultery. She's thrown at Jesus' feet in the hope that he will condemn her like everybody else has condemned her. But what does Jesus do? He says to her, the very thing she so desperately needs to hear, I don't condemn. Could there have been any doubt in that woman's mind that she was loved by Jesus? Perhaps you remember the story of Zacchaeus, the hated tax collector, 
who was only a little man, and when Jesus was passing through the village, decided to climb up the tree to catch a glimpse of him. Zacchaeus was hated by everybody. He worked for the Romans and took money from the people. When Jesus called him down from the tree and said to him, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your place for dinner tonight. Could Zacchaeus have been in any doubt that although he was rejected and despised by everybody else, he was loved and honoured and accepted by Jesus? Perhaps you remember the story of the woman who had a bad reputation in the town, but who had somehow or other experienced the forgiveness of God. And so she came to Jesus and because of her sorrow, wept tears over his feet and dried those feet with her hair. And did Jesus push her away? Was Jesus embarrassed by the show of affection? No, he allowed her to show her love because he knew that that's what she needed. Could she have been in any doubt that she was loved and welcomed and forgiven by Jesus? And when Simon Peter, who three times denied that he even knew Jesus, was given three chances by Jesus to redeem those betrayals. Peter, do you love me? Do you love me more than these others? Do you really love me? When Peter was given those three opportunities to turn around his three betrayals, could he have been in any doubt that he was loved and accepted and forgiven and welcomed back by Jesus? St. John Bosco, contemplating the face of Jesus, learnt how to love. And in his way of loving, proved himself a faithful disciple of the Lord. Tonight, Don Bosco urges us to learn the same lesson. As parents, as husbands and wives, as children, as friends, as teachers, as priests, Don Bosco is saying to us, learn to love the way Jesus loved. Love in such a way that those you love know that you love them and respect them and, and welcome them into your lives. Remember what Jesus said, by this will people know <coughs> that you're my disciples, because you love one another as I have loved you. Tonight, in the presence of of the relics of Don Bosco, we thank God for this wonderful gift to the whole church. We thank God for this lesson in love that Don Bosco has given us. In the presence of his relics, let's ask Don Bosco to pray for us so that we will be able to learn the lesson of love which he has taught us and become living images of Jesus.